Good evening, folks. We have a wonderful evening's entertainment lined up for you, one that will provide several hours of pleasurable relaxation and diversion for you and your family. We hope you'll make this a weekly visit. Bring the family. Bring your friends. We hope you have a wonderful time. Come back soon. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Knights of the Pageless Library, where we are a little podcast dedicated to reviewing audiobooks. I am Bo Knight, joined as always by my brother, Ryan Knight, and today we are taking a look at the Audible original, The Sandman, written by Neil Gaiman and Dirk Magus, narrated by a full cast audio, so maybe we'll give them all a shout out later. Yeah, I think it's uh, Dirk Mags. Oh, Dirk Mags, I'm sorry. It's fine. And I think he i don't think he actually wrote this right i think it says he it's something he helped adapt it to either the audio version or something to that effect either way he is credited as this being by him and neil gaming so okay yeah and the full cast is gigantic it is a ton of people just so you know we listen to this from Audible. This came out in 2020, right? Yeah, that's what I'm seeing too. Yeah, and this is also in association with DC Comics because this is based on a DC comic book. Yeah, the one that I've never read, but I guess I'm kind of curious about now. Sure. So, I think I'm going to assume Neil Gaiman is a prolific... Uh, he's got he's got a lot of actually his own books and stuff not necessarily just uh, like comic books and stuff it looks like so he actually has quite a few things on audible this series i'm sure as some of you will know if you're listening to this was also recently released on netflix as a show series as well an adapted an adaptation of the comic book so yeah and we can't really speak to that because neither one of us has watched any of that. No, too. I have not. I've heard lots of good things. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Well, I haven't. Yeah. I haven't actually sat down and watched it. Okay. If any of you think we should sit down and watch it? Please feel free to email us and let us know that. Kotpl.pod at gmail.com is the easiest way to get a hold of us. And again, feel free to send any and all things our way. Yeah. So I think let's get to. The, the biggest thing about this book that is like how do you think the full cast does like how do you like the full audio okay so <clears throat> i i messaged you last night as i was finishing up the book asked you what speed you listen to this at, and you mm -hmm. said you listen to it at one did you listen to it at anything other than that just out of curiosity i did not because i noticed early on that it sounded weird when i had it sped up like at all it does so because normally i listen to stuff at like 1.4 that's what I listened to this at. I, so I went back and forth too. <laughs> so, and the only reason I bring this up in the performance part of it is I am curious. So if you listen to this at one, it sounds fine, right? I mean, it sounds normal. Obviously. Just fine. <clears throat> if you listen to it at 1.4, or and I didn't test this on any other speeds, but I know at 1.4, there's a very distinctive kind of warbling sound really between whether that's in the music or the voices and it's not everybody's it's specific ones so it makes me wonder if in this they were also putting in some kind of resonant undertones that at a normal speed you won't pick up on but will definitely have an effect on the way hearing things does that make sense yeah uh, almost like a subliminal type of <laughs> thing that they're and, really? I, and i'm it's like making me nervous well and i i'm only bringing it up because it was very noticeable at 1.4 times speed i mean you can you can hear this oh, kind of i gotta go back and sound. listen to it yeah just just and then just see what you think and i i don't necessarily know that it's like something sinister <laughs> But it would, it wouldn't surprise me if it was put there on purpose to <sighs> subliminally draw you to the sounds. Does that make sense? Yeah. Is that a bad thing? 
I don't know. Um, I know when you listen to it at 1.4 speed, it's obnoxious. Huh. So I listened to part of the center of this book at one, but I wanted to get it finished in order for us to be able to record this weekend. So I sped it up a little bit to cut a couple hours off the time. And yeah, it made it a different experience for sure listening yeah. to it at that speed because i like for me i, I listened to this 1.0 the whole way through so i didn't i didn't notice i was being subliminally messaged to <laughs> i don't know listen to more books perhaps <laughs> i i'm gonna be honest i think this is really really well done i feel like this is some of the best audio mixing i've heard like some of it is really really crispy i think yeah I, and I would Which agree is, with it, that. It's, it's a shame, I feel like, to me that you had to rush it because I feel like this is something that's that's honestly pretty special when it comes to, like, full cast audio. Okay. And rightfully so. There clearly was a lot of money put into this. I mean, you have some really big names in here narrating. You have James McAvoy is one yeah. of the main narrators. Uh, you have Andy Serkis in here. You have this Cat Dennings. All, like big name people and that's i'm just naming a few that i know off the top of my head um so clearly a ton of money and production value went into this most likely above and beyond what some places could even afford to do and i and that shows i think i i honestly think though yeah listening to it at 1.0 is the way to do it i honestly think that by rushing it i did not get the experience i probably should have from it um and it really makes me wonder about the if well i'm is, curious like, about the warble messaging. thing here <laughs> here i was waiting for you to be like i really found myself wanting to buy all their comic books yeah like, yeah I'm like <laughs> oh yeah by the way i hold a whole full batman costume now <laughs> i'm recording this while i'm in that costume i i guess it's kind of fair to bring that up now how do you feel about the like the kind of DC ties that are in here. I I don't know if I've said this on the podcast before, but I I'm not like a superhero fan at all. I I don't go out of my way to watch any superhero movies. I don't care if they are Marvel, DC, doesn't matter. I've never been a fan of comic books. So for me I could have done without that stuff. Um, it kind of bothered me when the first time I heard Arkham Asylum brought up, it it just feels tired to me. Th does that make sense? It, no, I, I agree with you. And they bother me too, but I feel like they're really limited. It, it's It's more just like set dressing, I feel like a lot of the time is all it feels like. It doesn't feel very additive to me for a story and a concept I feel like that is really, really cool and novel on its own. Mm -hmm. Well, and it's not like our main character, like the Sandman, uh, Morpheus, doesn't like run into Batman. So there's no real interaction there in terms he, of... He, t he talks to the Martian Manhunter. I don't even know who that is. I don't, you I don't? don't? Know. You didn't watch don't. the Justice League at all? No, I can't believe that's, that. that's what I'm telling you. I'm not interested in that stuff. So it it didn't add anything for me. You know what I like? Yeah, if you are someone who is a huge fan of this stuff and in this universe, then yeah, it probably adds something for you. But for me, it doesn't add a whole lot. I quite frankly don't I don't like the whole Arkham Asylum thing solely for the fact that they ripped that from like Lovecraft. And yeah, then is, I mean, that this. is what it is. Yeah. yeah, I so for me, I don't really like that part of it. I can see how if you're a fan of these characters already, if you know these other characters, that that might be cool. But for me, I, it didn't add anything for me to the story. Okay, I feel like that's fair. What did, what did you think? I mean, so the sound mixing and stuff aside... What did you think about the like overall cast as a whole? I think there are a lot of good people. Like a, a, I don't think there are very many performances that aren't very good. Mm -hmm. I think most of it is really quality voice acting. And the guy who who does the Sandman Morpheus? 
that's James McAvoy. Yeah, dude, he absolutely kills it. Yeah, James McAvoy is, is amazing in this. And James McAvoy, for those of you who don't know, is like an amazing actor. I mean, I, I've always thought James McAvoy was a really, really good actor. Um, makes sense. He would probably want to step in and do this because he's also in X-Men. He's oh, who the, is he in X-Men? He's the young... Oh, Professor a, X? Yes. Yeah. I was going to say, who's the dude in the wheelchair? <laughs> that's, that's it. I would have got there. <laughs> um, yeah, he's the young Professor X in that series. So... Yeah, he though, and he's good in those first class movies too. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, he's an amazing actor so yeah it should be no surprise that he was able to step into this so well because i i also thought his performance was very solid and um, the girl that does death is also fantastic right so that's kat dennings okay she's also a big time uh like actress yeah her, her, her voice actress. is super familiar to me mm -hmm. for for a second and it might have been because it was at the higher speed i thought it was the the gal who does um Louise's voice off of Bob's Burgers. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. And I was going to be like, you've got to be kidding me. They got this oh, gal. She's funny, too, though. She is hilarious, but that's why I was going to say, how are you going to have her play such a serious character as Death? <laughs> like, yeah, it might have worked. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, so, <clears throat> I mean, I thought overall, I think for a full cast performance, this is this is something special. It really is. Uh, for anybody who's curious, like if you want to know every single person who starred in this, there is two ways you can figure that out. Uh, one, the book comes with a PDF file that shows you every single person and every single chapter and exactly who they voiced. So that's that's pretty neat. Uh, also, at the end of the book, they do 10 minutes of yeah. telling you every single person who narrated every single voice, which I thought was kind of unnecessary. But I, I understand mean, everybody wanting to get representation, I, but I feel it, like it makes the length a little deceiving. Yeah, exactly. Because, I, yes, I agree. Everybody should get their name, you know, put out there if they were part of this. Even if some of these people, I'm fairly certain, though, might have only had about four lines in some for of the sure. Because there's so many people. But I mean, I, I get up at the credits at the end of a movie, too. Yes, exactly. Yeah, I definitely get it. So, I mean, while we're on that, this book is 11 hours and two minutes long. So it's not, it's not like horribly short. No, and it, that's actually a solid, that's pretty long for a full cast performance. Yeah. Considering, and I think this is a little different from some of the other uh, full cast performances you get because some of them are like you're listening to a movie in the background. Some of them are basically just a standard book just with a lot of people reading different characters this falls somewhere in the middle i feel like because there is a lot of background noise and stuff to make you kind of feel like you're part of the scene as mm -hmm. well so and and all of that audio mixing though is so well done like the it way is. it's all layered and mm -hmm. stuff is 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 like flawless yeah it is very well done i will say that too i do have to give it credit for that I mean, I will say though, there are there's there's a couple parts that get a little confusing because I feel like it's not getting described as much as it like sounds. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, I would agree with that. <clears throat> you could get this book for free if you signed up for a free 30-day trial with Audible, uh, or you could purchase this flat out for 34.95 if you chose to do so. I, we've said this in the past if you're already like an audible member just buy tokens or wait for a token if you were going to purchase something <laughs> yeah it's cheaper that way yeah i'm not sure who pays full price for any of these titles but what are you uh so what are your thoughts on as far as like if this is easy to follow i mean i think it is i feel like it's very clear what's happening I guess the concept can be a little confusing sometimes, mm -hmm. but the fact that this deals with like so much with dreams, I feel like it can be kind of hard to explain what somebody is seeing. Sure. <clears throat> but I, I still think it's, the sound is also crispy and stuff like that, that I, I found it very easy to listen to and like very easy to follow along with what was happening. Sure. It 
the story part really kind of started to lose me towards the end. I will say that. Really? Uh, yeah. I, I will, we'll talk about it a little bit more once we uh, pass the spoiler wall. But yeah, I felt like it just, it kind of lost me a little bit towards the end. Um, but I agree in general. I think this started, it, it's pretty relatively easy to follow. But other than, like you said, sometimes you're dipping in and out of dream sequences and stuff. So sometimes I was like, wait, is this real? Or did this happen? So... I, and as far as easy listening goes, I mean, that probably goes without saying, right? The, because the production value of this is so high, I definitely would say this is easy to listen to, for sure. Yeah, I I feel like it's super easy to listen to. None, none of it sounds grating to me, which is a shame, I feel like, when you speed it up and it does. Yeah, it definitely does. So fair warning to anyone, like, if you thought you were going to listen to this, like you listen to most other audiobooks, no, plan on listening to this for the full time if you were to actually listen to this. <laughs> so with that, why don't we why don't we roll right into your recommendations? What, what do you I, think? I, this comes pretty highly recommended for me, but I mean, I think it's also for like a very mature audience. I feel like there's lots of pretty messed up things that happen in this. Mm -hmm. Like lots and lots of stuff that's pretty like very, very dark. And I think if you're if you're at all like squeamish, I don't think you would like a lot of that stuff. But I I really enjoyed this. I think this is a really good story, and I almost just want to get the second one just to listen to it. I almost I was at the bookstore and I almost picked up the comic book because I was just curious, like if if, if it all kind of stays that good. I found the story really intriguing, and I really wanted to know what was going to happen. It was the subliminal messaging, dude. Maybe. <laughs> I'm kind of curious, and I feel like maybe you hated it because it didn't sound like the, the sound was just kind of grating on you the whole time. Well, so now I'm curious, too, because I I thought this was okay. Um, I think if this hadn't been so in the DC universe, I would have enjoyed it more if it was kind of its own standalone story without the clearly, you know, DC comic undertone stuff. Um, I also found myself, because this is also each kind of chapter is its own little short story, basically. There are through lines, but there's a lot of little short stories in here, essentially. Like yeah, that's true. 20 short stories, basically. And I found myself wishing it followed a little bit more of a, which I'm assuming this is supposed to be probably 20 different, roughly, you know, versions of the comic. I don't, I don't really know how that stuff works. I'm not a comic book connoisseur. I would have liked a little bit more of a through line story that kind of followed from beginning to end, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Instead of a jumbled up bunch of stories instead. Also, when it, dips away from Morpheus, the Sandman, as the main character, when it dips away from him and talks about something completely... Oh, the Vortex? <laughs> yeah, I didn't really enjoy that stuff. I, I agree with him. you. I think that stuff's not near as interesting. Mm -hmm. I, I I agree with you. It's not, it's not near as interesting. Yeah. It made me a little... I don't know. I, this world just makes me really curious, I guess, of just like what the rules are. Well, that, it's interesting you bring up rules, um, and I guess this is <laughs> this is just I'm kind of cynical when it comes to stuff like this. So, in the beginning, right when when uh, without getting too spoiler heavy, when when the thing happens where the person is captured, right, <laughs> where the um, thing gets in the thing and then yeah. everything gets fucked, and and his uh, his things are taken from him. Oh yeah, that, yeah, 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 yeah. I know, he, I know, what, I know what you mean. Right, so then he needs to retrieve them, but he says, I created those things for X, Y, and Z. And I'm like, then why don't you just create some more? Like, if you have the ability to do that, why do you need to get these things back at all? That Things like that, I know it's a nitpick, but it really bothers me. <laughs> it's like, I would have rather him have found those things or someone created them for him to give him to give them to him 
instead of him being like, I created these to create my own world, therefore I'm powerless without them. It's like, well, what did you do before you had those things? I, it's again, it's a nitpick, but something that kind of sticks with me. Yeah, I mean, um, you're right. I guess it's not a very strong storytelling device, but I, I still enjoy the way he has to go about all of that stuff. Right. Uh, I feel I get, like it tells a good story along the way. I, I don't know. I'm kind of torn on this one. I feel like if I listen to it again at the correct speed, just took it nice and slow and easy through, it would probably be a different experience than I had. Um, as it stands, I, I was also a little bit bummed out. So like you're saying, this, this has uh, more mature tones, right? Like mm -hmm. even for a comic book type thing, which is perfectly fine with me. Uh, if there's anything I enjoy, it's actually more the stuff that is, even if it's comic books, book stuff that's aimed towards adults instead of being aimed towards kids mm -hmm. so i enjoy like deadpool and things like that where it's it's more of a mature content type of thing that's perfectly fine but i felt like this book kind of teeter-tottered on that idea because some parts would be super graphic and violent or gory and other parts would be super tame and not want to get in you know be the same way and so i was like okay wh which one are we doing here which story are we telling here i don't know see i found a lot of it to be disturbing uh, i mean i'm hard to get into it without this passing the spoiler wall but just like what happens to dream in the beginning mm -hmm. and then like what transpired to all the people i don't know i find that very scary especially like I, I'm sorry, I don't really want to get into it yet. Yeah. Well, let's... Okay, so I... That's a that's a heavy... Maybe not heavy recommendation from you, but that's a recommendation from you. Yeah, um, I, I would say pretty heavy. I really enjoyed this, and I'm genuinely surprised that you didn't like it. Yeah, I'm still... I'm kind of on the fence on this one. Um, I thought it was a good production. I think... I mean, you're getting a ton of production value out of this. I really do think... Yeah, I think for the, like, audio quality alone, this is almost worth listening to. Right. I just... I almost just wish it wasn't a comic book thing, you know, because that's just I ag I totally thing. agree with you. I don't I don't mind the comic book attachment. I just find like the setting of like Superman and Batman to be a weird place to put this sure. for as like a mini atrocities kind of get go by. And it's, it's a weird setting to me, too, for like an eternal being that has yeah. always been something. I feel like it's a it's a weird setting for all of that. I, I agree with you. But I, I don't know. I don't feel like those things, have, at least so far, maybe it gets different and it's way worse and him and Batman team up. And But so far, I feel like those, the, it didn't really get in the way for me. Yeah. Uh, we should also mention, too, that Neil Gaiman, the guy who wrote this, is also the main narrator like of the story. Yeah, and, and he, he does a fantastic job. <laughs> yeah, I thought he did do a really good job as the main narrator. Um, I was a, I was a tad torn on not necessarily his performance. I thought his performance was good, but just where they chose to use narration versus just the people talking. There was parts of that that confused me because. Oh, see, I, 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 he, he's, he's the narrator, right? Like he's telling you like the big scene changes that they can't just do with sound. Yeah. So he either tells you that, or he tells you like when he's describing what someone is doing also, since, you know, it would be weird for the character to be like, ah, I'm walking down the stairs now. Yeah. So he describes those things, but there are definitely parts where they could have just had the characters talking that would have got the point across that they instead chose to have him step in and say what they were doing or saying that I found a little strange. Yeah, you're right. I guess there is some parts where he's like, they continued to talk about. Yeah, exactly. And I'm like, well, why didn't you just have them continue to talk? That not that what you hired all that these actors for? It didn't bug me, but now that you mention it, it does. <laughs> I, and it just, it, I never thought about like that. that yeah, that was out weird. Mm-hmm. Yeah, little things like that definitely stood out to me in this. Um, 
again, I I don't want to give this like a no. I, I don't think it's like a bad book by any means. Um, it just really wasn't up my alley. Um, I, I think that's fair. I feel like this is not like a common audiobook experience. It's definitely a, like something different, and maybe I just found it so refreshing as that's what I like about it. Yeah, and that's that is a fair and valid point because these do not come around all that often. Uh, a lot of the times, full cast audio is very hit or miss. I feel like. Yeah, it can be. Mm, so, for something like this to kind of fall in between hit or miss for me is kind of also a weird one. Um, again, I I know the production values there. It's super high. The sound is crazy good. Uh, <laughs> It could be the best peach in the world, and you just don't like peaches, dude. It's cool. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I just can't, I can't, like, honestly say I can recommend this just because I don't think it's for me. Now, if you're, like, a crazy hardcore comic book fan, and... Oh, they already know about this if they're crazy was, hardcore, yeah, hardcore say, comic book fan. This has 47,000 reviews on Amazon, so it's... It, this is, like, a pretty, like, renowned, like, good thing, I, I think, as far as, yeah. like, in the comic book world. Yeah, so I guess if you, I annoy you because I don't love it, <laughs> sorry. They already turned it off, dude. Yeah, they already quit listening. <laughs> uh, and I mean, obviously, it's got to be good if Netflix picked it up to make full That is not movie. true. <laughs> yeah, good point. <laughs> this is Netflix. You're greenlit. <laughs> That's good point. Well, what do you think? Should we pass spoiler wall? We'll talk about the story a little bit. See if we yeah, it. yeah. And I don't, I don't know if you want to go episode by episode here, or just kind of like talk about some of the stuff you liked and kind of give like an overview of like the main yeah, plot. We can, we can skip over a lot of the short, the short things. Yeah, I think I'd rather talk about more of the uh, overarching kind of set pieces and stuff. Yeah, I, um, I agree. So yeah, for anybody who's new here, we're gonna pass spoiler wall, which means we're just gonna spoil the whole story. So. If you want to listen to this and you don't want to have a spoil for you, please pause the podcast, go listen to the book, and please come back here to hear our conversation about it. <laughs> so I like the beginning of this story a lot, actually. Um, I, I enjoyed the idea of them kind of like summoning Morpheus to our world and capturing it. Yeah, I. But it's an accident, right? They're yeah. they're trying to capture Death so they won't die. Right. But what they accidentally do is they capture Morpheus, and I I think what's implied is that they they did they did they did a ritual to summon the like most powerful of them, and that summoned Morpheus, and they expected that to be Death. Because there's four of them, right? Uh, there's, there's what Death, dream. Destiny, Dream. Yeah, Destiny. Is there one more? Death, dream, destiny, then desire. Desire, yeah. Yeah, so... Yeah, they summoned Morpheus and this cult, basically. They had this thing prepared, like this uh, prison, basically, where they were going to summon this god and hold them captive to basically, right, essentially blackmail them into make giving them immortality, right? Either either that or the fact that if they summoned death, people would stop dying. If he could, like, if they couldn't get out. Oh, yeah, okay. That makes sense. I, I, but you're right. He does bargain with Dream, but I think he's just trying to get power from Dream. Right. And then, like you mentioned, so he shows up with his three magic items. He has, like, his ruby, his little bag of sand, and this, like, elaborate-looking bug helmet, and they all get taken away from him. Yeah, because apparently when they first summon him, the process of crossing from his world to our world, and based on the way they summoned him, it like stuns him long enough for them to just walk in and take that shit from him, and then yeah. lock him in there. Um, and because of the magic like circle they drew around him in sand, he cannot escape. Uh, yeah, as long as the circle remains unbroken, or and he, he is, gets. I don't know, yeah, more. I call him Dream. I feel like that makes the most sense for me, at least. And so when when they capture Dream, like pe some people go to sleep for years and don't wake up. Like they won't wake up. Some people can't go to sleep. Like everybody starts. Like their dreams have less impact. 
and they're like not as real. Like it's it's almost like imagining is harder for everyone. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it really starts kind of screwing up everything. I don't know. And dude, I don't I don't know. I find the idea of like not being able to go to sleep really really scary. <laughs> I don't know why. The uh, so they they hold Dream in prison for a long time. I think thirty five years. Uh, I think it's seventy. Oh, is it that long? Yeah, because the dude who, the dude who summoned him, dies. Oh, you're right. It is seventy-two years. You're right. Yeah, and then it passes into his son, to hold him, and then the son gets old while they're holding him prisoner, and it's at that point when the son's, what is it? It's like him and his boyfriend. Yeah. And he, the son is in a wheelchair. He goes to wheel him away from Dream, that he breaks the circle of sand. Right, right. just like ever sand. like like a little bit. Right, and we should mention that for this whole time, for seventy years, Dream just sat there in the circle, not moving, not speaking, not doing, not doing anything. Yeah, they interrogate him a bunch of times, and he like refuses. You know, not refuses, but he just won't respond. He just doesn't do anything. Yeah, but he also he doesn't eat. He doesn't sleep. He, they know that they summoned something otherworldly because obviously and I mean we should say his skin is like he looks like a human with like pitch black skin but white eyes like it looks like stars in his eyes yeah <laughs> that's the end of that first chapter though right is when the sand is broken and he's released is that the yeah. end of that kind of first story yeah so yeah he gets away and he's got a but he's weakened now. Yeah, he like goes back to his realm. Meet Cain and Abel. Also, doesn't he also like that dude who captured him since he couldn't do anything? <laughs> You're right. Dad. He like he he curses him to eternal wakefulness, right? Yeah, or something. Yeah, which is kind of terrifying because that's, also, that's what I mean. He also yeah, it's yeah, it's pretty pretty scary. Yeah, he, he essentially just shatters his mind. It's like when Yu-Gi-Oh like sends yeah, guys. And they send him the shadow realm. Huh? <laughs> That's kind of what I imagine when he like that thing where he holds his hand up and the screen goes negative and then the yeah it shatters. does like the shatter <laughs> thing yeah <laughs> yeah. I'm sending you to the shadow realm. <laughs> he just pulls out a gun. So the uh, then what? Yeah, we meet Cain and Abel. Yeah, which... so he goes back to his realm and they talk about like parts of his world have drifted off. So he has to like, he's going to have to go gather them all up, but he's not going to be powerful enough until he gets all of his items back. Without his items, right? And this is where I was like, this doesn't make any sense. I don't like stuff like that, where he's like, I created these things for my world or whatever. So yeah, I was like, why do you need to go find them? Just do it again. Just make new ones. It is a little annoying, but it it is kind of, the way they explain it is that like he had to sink part of his essence into that stuff. So I like suppose. he's not the same without them. Yeah, I I suppose. Yeah. And we're getting like little breadcrumb stuff throughout this of like where those items have ended up and who's using them and like what they've done with them. Right. Yeah, because the items also were stolen, right, from the guy who summoned yeah. him. Yeah. Two of the items were stolen, correct, uh, by one of the other dudes that was with him, the helmet and the the ruby, right? Yes. And yeah, and he takes the helmet and he bargains with Beelzebub and gets a charm to protect him from the the guys that summon Dream because he knows they're going to be able to curse him. Right. And then he just holds on to the ruby. But then one day he takes the amulet off for some... some No, somebody s- steals it from him and like then all the curses they've been trying to cast on him the whole time all take place at once. Yeah, yeah, that's what I remember too. And then some other dude ends up with the ruby, right? And that's the one that... The, yeah, the guy, the guy that's in Arkham. Yep. Yeah. Keep talking. Yeah. I gotta go to the bathroom. Oh, okay. So yeah. So he has to go. So he goes and gets his helmet first. So he has to go to hell. And he he talks with the demons that are there. And hell, like I guess hell, like went under some little changes in like the way it's ran. So it's ran by three people instead of just Lucifer. So it's Lucifer, Beelzebub, and I can't remember the other one. Hopefully Ryan will be able to remember. But one of Beelzebub's freaking minions is the guy that gave him the helmet. So they have this really lame 
like word duel. I don't even really know how to describe it. It's like it's like whoever's idea is best wins, and so they just like say things back and forth. Like, oh, I'm glad like, you said it's really lame. Oh, I, dude, it's super lame. Yeah, it's like you serious like dream and a demon are gonna fight, and they're like, I am a snake and I bite your buffalo. Like, well, I am the universe. <laughs> like, I am a black hole. Yeah, so it was dumb. very strange, and I wasn't impressed. I, I thought that was really really lame. Um, I can't remember the third demon either that's running it with Lucifer. Because is Beelzebub, Beelzebub the Lord of Flies? Yeah, Beelzebub's the Lord of Flies. Oh, and then, great. was it Azrael? Yes, yeah, Azrael. Yep. Okay. Nice, nice name drop. Thank you. <laughs> so he gets his helmet back. And, like, with the helmet, because some, some girl had had, she had the dream powder, and she was just using it to like dose herself essentially, right? Like a drug, yeah. Yeah, she was using it like a drug and he like goes and gets that back from her. But while all of this is happening, the I can't remember what he calls himself, Dr. Destiny, he yep. he breaks out of Arkham and he like gets his, he gets to the Ruby before, no, he gets to the Ruby after Dream does, right? Cause Dream- No, op- no, he gets it before. I thought or Dream no, no, no. opens the case he... and it drains Dream so much that he like isn't even yep. corporeal form anymore. Yep, you're right. Yeah, he he set a trap on it, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So then he takes it though, right? And he's the, this is where he goes to the diner. Yeah, and this part's super fucked up, don't you think? Yeah, super weird. Which is fine. That's that's all fine and dandy, okay? Um, I like this part because it's fucking creepy. And some really weird shit happens. So basically, while he's there, uh, Dr. D is able to kind of control these people, right? By using... Well, yeah, but the, not just them. I think, like, a lot of people at once is the vibe I got. But he is... He does, he does like, puppet them and makes them do whatever he fucking mm-hmm. wants. Yeah. Yeah, and he does some really fucked up stuff with them. Basically, by the end of it, too, once they come to get him from there, like... Everybody is like either having sex, but they're dead at the same time, yeah. or they killed each other, or cut their arms off, or what? Like it's really some messed up stuff, which is all fine and dandy. I thought it was very interesting, but what I didn't like, because then doesn't Dream like come back to get the ruby from the guy? Yeah, and they have like a dream fight. Uh huh. It's really weird. Um, it, essentially, Doctor D wins. But he wins and he doesn't realize that the world that he's in is his world that's inside the ruby. So he destroys it all and he essentially destroys the ruby without realizing it, giving Dream back all of his powers. Right. And then what does Dream do? The dude who could put this dude in whatever perpetual wakefulness or a perpetual nightmare? No, he just takes him right back to Arkham Asylum. I know. I thought that was a really fucking weird dude. Yeah, dude, see, that's lame. That's but I guess he's no longer threatening because the ruby doesn't exist. I don't know, man. I just thought that was dumb. That I did think that was weird, too. I don't know. I guess they were going for kind of a joke because he's like, oh, yeah, I know where my cell is. But yeah, I didn't yeah, like he that did at all. did kill a bunch of people and like do some horrible shit. That's what I mean. Yeah, he did a bunch of horrible stuff. And that's one thing I've never really liked about comic book stuff. It's like yeah, this guy I agree. murdered you just a ton fucking of people. Murder them. Yeah, this guy murdered a ton of people. Why are you going to lock him up so he can then just escape and do it again? Like, how does that make any sense? Anyway, I digress. Uh, so Dream has all his stuff back now, right? He's got his yeah. helmet, he's got his sand. Wasn't there in the beginning too, though, somebody... Am I remembering this correctly? Uh, was using... Like was calling himself the Sandman, but he, yeah. he was like a superhero, right? And he would mm-hmm. put on the gas mask and he would gas the dudes to fall asleep, right? Yeah. Okay. Does that come back up later? Not in this one. Oh. Okay. Put too much. I <laughs> put too much uh, credit on that part. I know that part's cool though. I see. I, I like those little like side things that happen sometimes. Somewhere in here, there's a story about. No, I guess that's way later. Never mind. Yeah, see, I don't remember, like, a ton of these detail for detail-wise. No, I mean, that's okay. I just want to mention another one of the short ones that I like. 
is when like Dream and Death are like in a bar hanging out, and some guy says he like doesn't want to die. Yeah. And okay, so yeah. Death lets him live forever, and they keep meeting up throughout the years. Mm -hmm. I I don't know. I kind of like that story. Yeah, like every 100 years, they're yeah. supposed to meet back in that bar at mm -hmm. the same on the same and day. Fucking one of the times, one of the ladies figures it out. Yeah. And she knows who Dream is. <laughs> like I don't know. I thought that was pretty cool. One of the parts I thought was interesting too is when they have like the convention for like the bad guys. Oh yeah, so yeah, that, that's like kind of the next arc is like he has to go get the three people back. The Corinthian, Fiddler's Green, and oh, what's the other one? Uh, honestly, I don't remember. Um, mostly because I couldn't get over the fact that I was like, this is very strange that all these bad guys are having a convention about Oh, that part's really creepy, dude. Yeah, it is really creepy. Like, there's literally, like, a rape scene in this. Yeah. Um, and the dude who does it, freaking Funland, like, yeah, that shit's creepy. But it, again, I'm like, these guys are having a convention where they literally meet every year to talk about them being No, oh, that bad was guys. the first annual one. Oh, that was supposed to be the first yeah. annual one? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll give it a little bit of slack then. But... Oh, I, I agree with you. It's a very weird, and that whole... I don't know. It's I, it's weird, like how open they all talking about those things. But at the same time, I feel like it felt really real at the same time. Like that was really something that would fucking happen. Yeah. Oh, it was very. It's very, very disturbing. Yeah, you're talking about the fucking Corinthian guy that eats the kids' eyeballs, who is one of Dream's like nightmares <laughs> that he makes and sends to people. <laughs> right. Yeah. That's yeah. That's what he is. Right. The Corinthian. Yeah. Because he also like he eats eyeballs and his eyeballs can also turn into mouths. Yeah. Right. No, his eyeballs are mouths, I think. Oh, is that how they are all the time? Yeah. yeah. He, that's always why he's wearing his sunglasses. Oh, dude. All I know is for good or for bad, <sighs> like the ASMR type sound of him chewing on stuff just mm -hmm. oh, sent fucking shivers down my spine. Yeah, I think it's supposed to be pretty scary. <laughs> and it, it does it a good job. It made me uneasy. Yeah, it does a good job of that. Mostly because I don't I, I don't like hearing that sound, let alone amplified to 10 in my ears. <laughs> so yeah, it, they did a very good job of that. Uh, I didn't understand at all. Now, I'm not going to lie. I might have been a little drunk at this point. Hey. <laughs> uh, I'm listening. The, the cats thing. The cat story. Oh. What, what the hell is that all about? Where it's basically told through the cat's eyes. Yeah. So there's like this story about uh, these cats gather. And this one cat is like giving a speech to all of them about how like if they. It's, I mean, she tells her whole life story and how she doesn't trust humans anymore because they drowned her kittens. Uh -huh. Obviously. But the, the 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 world used to belong to cats, and this and like that's what she's saying is like, but the humans dreamed up a place where they were in control, and that's just how it was. Mm. And I I think I think what the story is trying to get across is that like as, as as long as everybody has the same idea, those ideas have powers. Mm. I mean, yeah, that that's a good idea. Like as far as a good thought. It just, it seemed a little, it almost seemed like they were trying to tell, you remember the Cats of Ul Cats of Ulthar story by uh, no. Lovecraft? No, I don't. I'm pretty sure that's what it's called, Cats of Ulthar. I, I totally believe you, I don't, I, but I don't remember it. Refresh me. So that essentially is, this almost seems like they're trying to give you the flip side of that because that's kind of what it is, is it's this world where like, the cats are the rulers, essentially, in Ulthar. And if humans disrespect them or whatever, then you know, they kill them, basically. So this kind okay. of sounds like it's trying to do the flip side of that and kind of give you more of that, like, I, what Ulthar type thing was. I bet you this is inspired by that. I feel like a lot of this is very Cthulhu feeling, like Lovecraft feeling. Yeah. yeah I You're right. I, I didn't, I wasn't aware of that story. So that totally makes sense to me. I, I feel like that definitely is like a direct corollary. Um, then there's also, I didn't, maybe you can help me understand okay. why there was that other dude who was saying he was the Sandman. So like when the kid would fall asleep, 
he would go, he would dream about oh. this other Sandman. So, so th yeah, those, those are the two of the guys that that left Dream's realm. And what they were trying to do was make their own like dream realm to like hide out in so dream wouldn't come find them so they took a guy who was dead and used like his they were using that kid's mind and they essentially like tethered him in there so he like the ghost couldn't oh, leave that's right. and the ghost was like the power source that was like running it all right but then there's a there's a girl in there right yeah Eight, or whatever she calls herself because she was also like a superhero right before she got pregnant yeah she was okay so dream comes in which i didn't fully get why dream is like he finds out about this and he's like suiting up like batman style where his freaking you know, he does his, suit up batman style i didn't take it that way but that he, totally is what it is yeah because he <laughs> literally has another that. dude basically there i can't remember what he calls him lucian maybe so, yeah he's, he's like the guy that like alfred. takes all the counts and stuff yeah yeah he's like his alfred though and he's like handing him his like clothes as he's putting them on and i was like i i don't get it i don't understand um but then he goes there right and he solves all that shit, right like he lets the kid out of the dream he makes it so the dude dies for real and then yeah. <laughs> he does that like he's like oh you're disgusting and just sends him away <laughs> which I, I thought was pretty funny yeah and then he tells her though right that because she's been pregnant this whole time she's been stuck in there so for two years but he says when your son is born it will be mine right yeah because it was then, technically like born in dream or whatever right but then he also she gets all pissed off and she's like over my dead body you were yeah. my firstborn so like is that setting up for something i'm assuming in the next book probably maybe i don't know maybe we'll find out but uh, yeah <laughs> she does get pretty angry yeah she does i mean I'm rightfully so i guess <laughs> And I feel like the, really the other arc that we should talk about is like the vortex arc thing that happens. Uh, does that have anything to do with the Shakespeare stuff? No, 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 no. There no. also Shakespeare stuff. There happens? was, yeah. That Dream is essentially giving Shakespeare all of his ideas. Yeah. He's using he's using him as like a mouthpiece to tell his own personal stories that Dream right. wants to tell. Yeah. Which, meh, like, I don't know. I'm not like big on like the stories where it's like this is why this happened you know we're gonna try to do like a rewrite of history type of thing i it's okay i just not that into it. yeah i didn't that one's kind of confusing too because it's like real shakespeare and it's there's like demons watching it and it's i don't know enough about shakespeare yeah, i, I kind of tune that one out honestly okay me, yeah me too because i yeah i don't know nearly enough about shakespeare mm, no 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 i'm talking about the the vortex thing is so there was a girl who was born. Somebody got raped when they were like in the sleep thing for the 72 years. And they had a they had a kid and then she had a kid and the girl wakes up when Dream comes back. She goes and meets her and like they find out like that's really her parents and stuff like that. And then she goes to find her brother, which is the kid that's constantly sleeping. Yeah, that's the kid, right? Yeah, who keeps trying to go into the dream world yeah. because his real world is horrendous because the people mm -hmm. are literally just keeping him to collect their uh, foster check from yeah. him. Yeah, which is horrible. That's a horrifying thought. And they, like, beat the shit out of the kid if he comes out of the basement. Uh -huh. Well, they end up killing him doing that, right? Oh, I don't know. Is that what happened? I think so. I think he dies. Okay. See, I yeah, I must. Have... Anyway, so but this this girl, I, I can't remember her name. She since since all those weird circumstances, she has like this. She basically has like similar powers to what Dream can do, and like can affect people's dreams and stuff like that. And like that's not allowed in Dream's world. I guess he's the only one that's allowed to dream super hard. So he's yeah. gonna kill her, but then her grandma who's on her deathbed is actually the one that was the vortex and like since she dies she loses her powers oh that's okay yeah i remember exactly i know what you're saying yeah yeah that's i feel like that's the only other non like fluff arc thing right yeah i, I kind of forgot about that i mean there is there are lots of bits sprinkled in here where we meet the other we meet at least desire and death a bunch of times 
Well, we don't think we meet Destiny, unless I missed it. Destiny. I don't... I can't remember. There's somebody in here as Despair. It's not Despair, right? Despair is part of Desire's, like, harem of things. Yeah, some of those bits got a little confusing. Again, I would have liked more... And I get it, this is like kind of written in comic book style, multiple stories, but it just, it felt like not enough through line for me, because there's also time skips where you don't necessarily, you know, know how much time has passed, why, or what they were doing in yeah. between, so... Or this, if this was like before Dream got imprisoned or after, I feel right. like sometimes that can get kind of confusing. When he is in like the dream realm, or when he is not. Yeah. So. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I might have to go back and just listen to it again, and maybe I'll feel a little bit better about it. Again, I just, for me, it's just not really up my alley. I, I, I think that's fair. It, uh, I, I think it would have honestly hit different if it wasn't supposed to be like a comic book book like if it was just a story being told more like a normal story then i think the show is more like that i don't i don't know if the show actually has any dc stuff in it but at least that's what i've heard that might not be true it might have piqued my interest enough to check that out to see if that's the case so but i don't know i i don't really got anything else on this one i'm not gonna sit here and i'm not gonna like sit here and harp on it and try to like pick it apart because i don't i don't think that's fair of me because i it would be one thing if i knew a lot of stuff about like the dc universe and i could say why x y and z is right or wrong but i don't so i'm not gonna try to talk about it as if i do yeah i think that's fair i don't know i enjoyed this one i don't know i thought it was ref it was it's for the full cast audio i think at least it's pretty good yeah and that is that is a good point performances are top notch and the production value is top notch and actually just i was just curious so i was looking at the second one the sandman act two mm -hmm. and they got even more like big name people for the next one uh, like oh, even shit. bigger name people but you know what's funny this freaking Kristen Shaw is in it as Delirium. And you know who that is? I'm pretty sure that's Louise from Bob's Burgers. <laughs> no way. I'm not kidding. <laughs> so it, isn't that a little on the nose that I said that in the beginning? This is kind of strange. Um, hang on, I'll look it up real quick, but I'm pretty sure that's who she is. And that kind of bothers me because that's like one of those, if that's who it is, that's one of those weird synchronicities. Yes, that's exactly who it is. Kristen Shaw is Louise Belcher. So, just saying, there's one of those weird synchronicities. <laughs> yeah, that is a little strange. And I think on that note, maybe we should wrap this one up. I agree. For, if, for nothing else, so this episode doesn't get lost. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, so thank you guys for listening. We really do appreciate it. Again, if you got anything to say about this or anything else, please feel free to email us. kotpl.pod at gmail.com. It's still the easiest way to get a hold of us. Yeah, with that, we'll catch you guys in the next one.